This is the lecture on overview of statistical terminology used in assessment in special education. My name is Dr. George Giuliani from Hofstra University and today what we're going to talk about is a topic that I know is a little bit overwhelming for some people, a term that is often frightening for people uh, and, and that being statistics. But I can assure you that after this lecture uh, we'll break it down into its easiest components, we'll break down uh, all the different terms that you need to know and really get you to understand what statistics are and in particular how they relate to assessment in special education. Now let's start first with this term statistics. What actually are statistics? Well statistics just very simply are mathematical procedures used to describe and summarize samples of data in a meaningful fashion. In a sense we're going to take samples of data in a very meaningful uh, fashion. We're going to take numbers, we're going to take things that really don't have any meaning and turn them into things that do have meaning. And we're going to talk about basic statistical terminology that you need to understand. And those are measures of central tendency. Then we're going to talk about how that relates to what's called frequency distributions. We'll talk about the range within a distribution. We'll address the standard deviation. We'll talk about the normal curve, which plays a very critical role in special education. And then finally, we'll talk about correlations. And correlations are not a statistical term, but they're something you'll often see in the literature when reading uh, different things about statistics, and therefore you need to understand what a correlation is. So we have lots of different things to discuss within this lecture, and we will start out with the measures of central tendency. Now, the measures of central tendency are the mean, the median, and the mode. When we talk about the measures of central tendency, we're talking about the mean, the median, and the mode. And, and my guess is that you have heard of these terms. We actually start teaching the mean, median, mode in elementary school, and we actually take it to middle school, high school, and then even into college. So the mean, median, and mode are the measures of central tendency. Now, what is the mean? Well, the mean is just another term for the mathematical average, the average of the numbers. And it's simply defined as the summation, meaning the addition, of all the scores in your distribution divided by the total number of scores. So again, it's adding up all the scores in the distribution that we have, and then you divide by the total number of scores that you have. And statistically, it's represented by capital letter M. So anytime you see the capital letter M in the literature, that is the mean score. Sometimes, by the way, you'll also see it as a little x, lowercase x, with a bar over the top, with a line over the top. So anytime you see a lowercase x with a line over the x, that also represents the mean. So either look for capital M or lowercase x with a line over the top of it. So let, let's take a look at our example problem here. Suppose we had a distribution. And in the distribution of scores, we had an 8, a 10, an 8, a 14, and a 40. 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40. Calculate the mean score. What is the mean? 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40. What's the mean score? Well, if you go back to our definition, the first thing we have to do is we have to summate or add up the scores. So we have 8 plus 10 plus 8 plus 14 plus 40. We add up the scores in the distribution. And when you add up those scores in the distribution, you get 80. So when you add them all up, 8 plus 10 plus 8 plus 14 plus 40 is a total of 80. Now, how many scores are there in the distribution? Well, you have 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40. You've got five total scores. So the rule says take your total scores, okay, take the total scores, all right, and then we're going to find, obviously, what we added up, which was our 80, and we take our total uh, summation, 80, divided by the total number of scores, 5. 80 divided by 5 is 16. The mean in our distribution is 16. We simply add up our scores, 80, divided by the total number of scores, 5. 80 divided by 5 is 16. The mean in our distribution is 16. Now, What's the problem, though, with just providing a mean score? Why don't we give just the mean score? Well, the problem is, is that extreme scores can greatly affect the mean. One extreme score can greatly affect the mean. 
So for example, in our example that we just discussed, the mean was 16. 80 divided by 5 got a 16. But there's actually only one score that's even greater than 16. We had 8, 10, 8, 14, and then we had the 40. The 40 is really an extreme score. If you take a look at our scores, 8, 10, 8, 14, those are all pretty close to each other, but then we have the one score, which is a 40. So extreme scores, whether high or low, can greatly affect the mean. And that's why we don't just give the mean score when we're talking about statistical analysis. Because extremes can impact the mean score, we then have what we call the median. And that's our next measure of central tendency, the median score. And again, this is probably a term that you've heard of before, but if not, the median is simply the midpoint in the distribution. It's the middle score. Half the scores fall above the median, and half the scores fall below the median. So if you take your distribution of scores, half the scores would be above it, and half the scores would be below it. That middle score is the median. So let's go back to our original distribution of scores. 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40. 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40. Calculate the median. Well, we're calculating what is the middle score. What is the middle score in the distribution 8, 10, 8, 14, and 40? Now, it's very important that when you calculate the median, you must first put the scores in order from the lowest score to the highest score. So in our example, our lowest score is 8 up to our highest score is 40. So we look at our distribution. We have 8, 8, 10, 14, and 40. 8, 8, 10, 14, and 40. Now we calculate our median. And what we do is we cross off our low, 8, and we cross off our high, 40 we cross off our low, 8, and we cross off our high, 14. And what's ever left in the middle is our median, and that is 10. So in our distribution, you cross off the low and you cross off the high, and you cross off the low and you cross off the high. And in the end, what's left in the middle is the median score in our distribution, that is 10. Now, what happens if there are two middle scores, though? What happens if you cross off the low and you cross off the high, and ultimately there are still two middle scores? So for example, in our distribution, what if we had 8, 10, 8, 40, and 12? When you put these scores in order, you would get 8, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 40. So if you cross off the low, the 8, and cross off the high, 40, and you cross off the 8, the, uh, and then you cross off the 14, you're left with two middle numbers, 10 and 12. Well, obviously, you can't cross out the 10 and the 12, so what would you do? All you do is simply take those two middle numbers, take those two middle numbers, and average them. So in our distribution, we're left with 10 and 12. We simply take the average. We add 10 and 12 is 22, divide by 2, and the median in our distribution of 8, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 40 would be 11. So the median is our mid score, uh, the middle score in the distribution. It is not affected by extreme scores because we cross those out. And whatever you get is the middle number is our median, and any time you get two middle numbers, you take the average of those two numbers. This ends the lecture on, I'm sorry, this ends part one of the lecture on statistics used in assessment. You can now go on to part two.